Now this top five list I'm about to share with you is a personal list. It's been rattling around the back of my mind for a couple years. Five reasons I think EVs are either very elegant or just destined to be the kinds of cars we drive tomorrow. And let me point out, I am not an EV owner, nor do I intend to buy one, but there are certain truths I just can't deny, and here are a few of them. Number five is not about EVs at all, but is about the generational change of folks who buy cars in general. And as we look at younger demographics with their lesser interest in owning a car, lesser interest in running out and having a driver's license, concerns that the classic car hobby is starting to wither. Can you say that again? I was texting. We start to see an overall picture that tomorrow's car buyer is less concerned about some brawny, gas-burning, roaring sex machine and entirely happy with a smart, efficient appliance. That definitely helps set the table for electrics. Number four is ridiculously simple, but it's the rotation, stupid. That's what a car wants to do, is turn its wheels. That's how it moves. And yet, the combustion engine car does kind of the opposite to start. It has pistons going up and down, and then through a complicated mess of gears and crankshafts, turns that into rotating energy. It's just so inelegant. You have all these pistons banging up and down in a box of high pressure that's always trying to leak and pull itself apart. Electric motors don't work that way. Plus, combustion engines, partly because of that whole up and down nonsense, are RPM challenged. Electric motors love to rev over a much wider range. Therefore, they need little, if any, help from a multi-speed transmission. It just makes sense. If you want to turn something, start with a power source that's already turned. Learning. Number three is very controversial, but it's incentives. Whether or not you like the fact that you're subsidizing someone else's Tesla, the fact is that state, federal, and international governments have thrown billions at the idea of getting us to buy electric cars. It's made a huge difference and will continue to for some time. Number two is really important, a very big concept, the core efficiency of electric motors versus combustion. That gasoline car you drive today is maybe 35% efficient at turning that gallon of gas into forward motion. Electric cars, depending on how you measure them, are 50 to 90% efficient at using the electricity in their battery. Now, yes, this is apples and oranges because EVs have to lug around a vast, incredibly heavy battery, which does offset some of the overall efficiency. However, new numbers from the Argonne National Lab suggest that at least the density of cars powered by battery versus dinosaur juice will be about the same by 2045. No longer a deficit for the EV. Now, before I get you to number one, I'll tell you what's not going to be. It's not going to be the whole clean and green argument. That one borders on religious fervor, and it has a lot to do with where the power to charge your EV comes from, way upstream, what kind of pollution is generated there, as well as what happens to all those lithium-ion battery packs down the road, a picture that is still emerging and not entirely clear. To solve this one, I should probably arrange a cage match between Sierra Club members and Formula One fans. Maybe we'll do that later, but for now, we're going to leave this part aside. Number one hits you in your pocketbook, and nothing moves more cars than that. Some recent numbers crunched by Bloomberg suggest that by 2025, decreases in the cost of electric car batteries per kilowatt hour of stored energy, a key metric, will have fallen so low that it is then the sensible choice for the average consumer who wants to buy and drive a car at the least average cost. You can't say that right now without incentives. In the future, you will be able to. And Bloomberg believes this sets the table for a big rise in electric car sales to be nearly 35% of all global new car sales by 2040. Is that big? Well, it was 1% last year, so I'd say so. 